Hi, welcome to VNN. We have with us today a community activist and leader, Dr. Ragini Sharma, uh, who is the president of the Canadian Organization for Hindu Heritage Education. Uh, there is currently a petition now being presented in the House of Commons asking that Hindu phobia be listed in the Canadian Human Rights Code. Uh, let us hear what Dr. Sharma has to tell us. Uh, welcome to VNN, Dr. Sharma. <laughs> Thank you, Bala, for having me. And uh, you have such an excellent show. And I thought I should come and uh, do some outreach to the community to explain uh, why we started this petition and why it's so important for Hindus across Canada uh, to support. Uh, important thing for people to know is that this petition is uh, uh, in the House of Commons of the parliament, uh, it's been sponsored by um, an MP. So what that means is that this petition will reach the floor of the parliament as a motion. And this is, uh, we've never had this opportunity before. Uh, you know, COHEED, um, uh, the organization that um, I'm with, uh, that we started, uh, the Canadian Organization for Hindu Heritage Education, we uh, started it because, um, we were noticing that uh, our children in schools were facing uh, Hindu phobia. Now, there's a lot of uh, confusion about uh, this term, and I don't want people to ha get hung up. Basically, it's anti-Hindu sentiment. Um, and across yeah. Canada, yeah. US, mm -hmm. yeah, this word is being used. So I know some people, I can, we'll put a definition of it on the screen for you so that you're clear, but basically is, uh, you know, any uh, misinformation, any derogatory uh, um, uh, remarks about our culture, our tradition, about our um, deities, a misunderstanding that's been spread or direct attack on temples or random attacks on our people walking down the street or our children being bullied. That's what we're trying to address. Well, is it, that is widespread, I mean, uh... Is it? It's, Bala, you know, you asked such an excellent question. And it, absolutely, it is so widespread that we are having to deal with it. Um, do you know about the caste motion that was passed by the city yeah. of Brampton mm -hmm. and before that by the Toronto District School Board? Yeah. So I know a lot of Hindus um, live, I mean, this is a cross Canada petition. Um, but um, just to give an example, you know, even the city of Brampton has passed a motion about caste oppression and the TDSB was the first one to uh, cast uh, against this motion, to pass this motion. And also in Burnaby and BC, in BC and Surrey, I think that similar caste in that universities, people are trying to uh, make uh, this caste motion. And basically this is ethnic profiling of Hindus. What this motion basically says is that people from South Asia, in particular Hindus, uh, that they are inherently bigoted. What it means is that we are by nature um, uh, oppressors. We are being painted as oppressors. Now we are trying to fight racism here. You know, we're living in a uh, we're living in a Christian country. So Canada is a Christian country. The Queen of uh, now, of course, we have <laughs> we have a king. The king is the head, um, you know, ceremonial head of Canada still, and he is the he is the leader of the of of the Christian Church in England, right? The Protestant Church. So this is a Christian country. Now there is a recognition that other uh, religions and other uh, people from different traditions are not given equal treatment in law, in front of law, and that is why we had these uh, multiculturalism and, and human rights, uh, they were brought in to protect minorities. So we uh, as Hindus represent maybe 2.5% of Canadian population, maybe roughly 850,000 people, well, right? I so we're- I have a question here. I mean, there are no problems, yeah. I think, uh, that's what I think. Most of this Hindu phobia comes from the Hindu community themselves. What and do you mean? I mean, that, this caste thing was mainly, I think, sponsored by Hindus, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a that, very that, good that, point. That, you know, it's such an excellent point. Should we be calling those people who who are uh, doing uh, this misinformation, disinformation, 
campaign against Hindus as Hindus? Should we be calling them those people who are, um, uh, you know, trying to harm us? What kind of Hindus are these? So if you look at the caste movement, who was behind it, they have Hindu names, but they're actually Marxists, they're leftists, yeah, that they're is not it. practicing Hindus. No, no. So, uh, you know, uh, if you look at, uh, when, when you watch the video, for example, on what was said at the committee level at the Toronto District School Board to push this agenda, what they were saying like is that Hindus are vegetarians. And that is casteist. <laughs> in their view, being a vegetarian is casteist because they want to be able to sit in front of you and eat beef or serve to you beef and you should eat it. Then you should, otherwise you're a casteist because you're a vegetarian. Uh, <laughs> so this is the kind of thing. And then for them, uh, saying Sri Ram is a, is, a, is, a, is a slogan that cannot be allowed. Because, uh, you know, Sri Ram is a misogynist. You know, these are the people who are teaching this kind of, and they're, these are the people who held a conference uh, called That's Dismantling Hind Hindutva, basically, yeah. which, which means dismantle Hindu dharma, because uh, it teaches these values that Sri Ram enshrined. So, you know, we are dealing with, so-called Hindus, these are not Hindus. They have Hindu names, but their agenda, uh, let me tell you um, how Hindu phobia, uh, you know, uh, did you have a question? Sorry to go on and on. No, no, this, I, <laughs> that's what I said. It's mainly Hindus, Hindus themselves. I mean, maybe they are getting, uh, they are being funded by something as some other organization. Uh, good point. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yes. There is uh, there there was a conference that was held called Dismantling Hindophobia. I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, there were like two, maybe thousands of professors across uh, the world who supported that conference, and they had Hindu names. And uh, this is the if you read Rajiv Malhotra's work, you know uh, he calls them sepoys. Uh, you know people come here, they want a job. Uh, you know, uh, the best, if you, you know, I was talking to someone, a 20, 20 year old, 25 year old uh, uh, person recently who's working, but wanted to do um, studies in Hindu Dharma and went to your University of Toronto and wanted to do uh, studies in Hindu Dharma in a positive way. And he was questioned about his Sampradaya, his caste, and, and then basically was told that, uh, um, he couldn't, he didn't qualify. Uh, basically, what was behind it was that he was not going to do research on caste, on women's oppression, minority oppression, Dalit oppression, uh, you know, so um, he's not welcome to do research. So, you know, if you, if you have, if you are a practicing Hindu, and you, uh, you're a young person, and you want to do research on uh, beautiful Sanskrit which is the foundation of civilization across the world. We have has benefited so much, you know, on meditation, and you, then you have to call call it mindfulness. If you want to do, and you know, it has been repackaged and uh, digested and taken away from its root. If you want to do research on that, you're welcome. But if you want to show uh, anything good about dharma, then your students, and uh, you know, if that's if your student, I have to give you an example at the OCAD, which is the Ontario um, College for Art and Design, there's a Hindu student union there. And they wanted to uh, start this Hindu student union and they were told, no, 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 that promotes Hindu nationalism, Hindutva, that's not a good idea. You should form an Indian, um, Hindu, uh, Indian organization. But they persisted and they formed a Hindu organization much against uh, what was being told to them. So this is the kind of Hindu phobia our students are facing. And then they, uh, they had organized an event uh, to promote Hindu art, right? Mm -hmm. And there was resistance to that. Um, and then finally, when they put up their posters, their poster had a green, uh, there were five or six posters that had green tape across them and said, not welcome in Canada or Hindu, Hindutva not allowed at uh, here. Hindu phobic message that was actually reported to the Toronto police. It was investigated as a hate crime. And guess what? It was an Indian student. The, one of those Hindu sounding names, 
you know, still we are our worst enemies. There's no doubt. But behind yeah. these people, yeah. behind these people are uh, a cabal of Marxist uh, non-Hindus and who non are paying non them non -Indians, to... Non-Indians also. Yes. Not yes. only with India. Yeah, okay. exactly who who are uh, breaking we call uh, breaking india forces they are evangelicals they are khalistanis there's islamists sorry to use that word but there are people who do not wish india to do well there's uh, there's no covert or overt uh, hostility towards hindus or hinduism from the white community in canada i have not, I have not come across anything like that oh there is absolutely there yes. is oh yeah um, you know, if, if you, uh, you know, the thing with uh, with Hindus is that we don't report them. You know, recently you you, you heard about in Oshawa, uh, a grandfather was, was yeah, stabbed yeah. 17 times. Yeah, yeah. But look at the police. You know, they didn't even investigate it to find out perhaps it was a, a hate crime. We don't know. But they, they even dismissed the possibility of it. We know that, you know, that... Uh, uh, is Muslim family, the beautiful family that was mowed down by uh, a person. You know, as soon as it happened, it was called Islamophobia, right? Before they knew what happened, they had already declared it was. But when it comes to Hindus, uh, Hindus have been uh, in a park celebrating and people have attacked them. There have been uh, Hindus attacked uh, when they're standing on the subway, uh, outside the subway station. People have been killed so many Hindus have been killed across Canada in random events, but nobody has looked at a hate uh, angle to them because there's a total lack of rec recognition. Uh, and I want to mention that there is a very fundamental hatred towards Hindus. For thousands of years, as you know, it, for 1500 years, the India was attacked because they were idol worshippers. You know, they were kafirs. They were heathens. There's a fundamental hatred for those who worship idols, who uh, we are made fun of uh, for worshiping cows. Uh, you know, we are told we have so many gods. So there is this misunderstanding, a lack of education. Some people are bigoted, but a lot of people don't understand. You know, you could go to work and if you're wearing a bindi, people will look at you still and say, this is something odd. Why, does she, why do you have to flaunt your, your identity? You know, people have been asked. I when I came to, to <laughs> from India, you know, uh, forty year, forty five years ago, I remember so many people uh, commented negatively about my nose ring that I ended up taking off it. Of course, now it's fashion, and now you can wear it. But uh, it's not because you're a Hindu; it's because now it's a fashion thing. And uh, you know, recently there was this incident of um, our our goddess uh, Kali who was shown smoking a cigarette. And you know, our Hindus, we we did show our displeasure, but you know what the university has done? That person uh, who was who has a Hindu name was actually, instead of being uh, uh, disciplined and told not to do some uh, disrespect for uh, Hindu deities, has actually been promoted and actually has won a scholarship and a position uh, uh, you yeah, know, of um, supported by some political parties in India too. That's the problem. Wh what? The oh, yeah, yeah. Let's not. <laughs> you know, one thing. That's one thing is really, yeah, Bala. I really yeah. think uh, you've raised an important issue about India. I think Hindus are not. Uh, we should not conflate Hindus with India. Although, as much that there is an effort in the media. Yeah. And the politicians to do it. You you are completely right because see in 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 Canada, Hindus come from Caribbean. all over the world. All over the world, yeah. yeah, yeah. They come from yeah. Trinidad. Yeah. They come from, uh, you know, Kenya. They come from uh, Nepal. Nepali community is large, yeah. you know, here and yeah. uh, so from all over the world, uh, Hindus are coming from UK. Uh, from generations, they've been in UK. Um, and from all over the world, South America, Africa. Are you involving those communities also in this? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. At the, you know, that uh, petition that we had for the cast, cast event, the, the Caribbean community is named that caste oppression is, is, uh, is in South Asian and Caribbean. 
So we we had uh, the Caribbean community leaders write letters to the the Toronto District School Board. So you know our children, uh, when they go to school, they're not safe. When your child goes to school, he could be asked his cast. What's that got to do with being in school? You know, so um, there's an effort. At what are they going to learn in school if this cast motion is implemented? We are at the stage of of bringing this up to the Ontario Human Rights Commission because the TDSB has asked the Ontario Human Rights Commission to tell them what to do with the implementation. So if it's implemented, uh, we're fighting it. If it's implemented, guess what? Your child could be in a classroom where it's being taught that the Hindus have the four Varnas and they have the Dalit uh, um, uh, in there and that they're oppressors. So instead of us being victims of, of racism, where we are, uh, you know, at the receiving end, now there's an effort to show Hindus as oppressors. This is the big uh, move that's happening across Canada, across U.S., is to paint the Hindus as white adjacent. This is an academic language. <laughs> white adjacent means that we are also like the white supremacists. Now we are the Hindu supremacists and we are the oppressors. So then if the temples are attacked, we get no sympathy, but because, oh, they are the oppressors. They, you know, they must have done something. So you deserve it. So that is a very dangerous thing that is happening is that Hindus are being, pro, uh, being uh, positioned as oppressors. And, and we are the ones that are, are oppressing others. We are oppressing Dalits, we are oppressing our women, we are oppressing minorities. So all those people who, who say there's no such thing as Hindu phobia, they should ask themselves, um, you know, why the Khalistani movement has started because it's the Hindu, Hindutva uh, that, that is oppressing uh, the, the community in India. Why is there is, uh, a movement uh, by the, Islamic extremists, because their narrative is that the Muslims are being oppressed by the Hindus in India. Why is there a movement that says the Christians are being oppressed by the evangelicals? You know, they go to United Nations. They've gone to Canadian Parliament to say that the Hindus are oppressors. So we we need to we need to fight this uh, negative stereotyping and prejudice that is being built against our community, which is an excellent, hardworking community that is absolutely not uh, oppressing anybody. We mind our own business. We go to our temples and we pray for Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. We pray for everyone. We don't have the concept of others. We don't say somebody will go to hell because they don't believe in Krishna or they don't believe in Rama. They said, you know, Sarvatham, Dharm, sab, sab ka bhala ho. Our approach is uh, to everybody is a divine, has a divine spark. We are all divine beings. You know, we have this idea of Vasudeva uh, Kutumbakam, we are one family. So here we are preaching these values. And here's these people who are going around uh, trying to put us in that frame that, of that we are oppressors. So that is why this Hindu phobia. Uh, is uh, e petition is so important because we need to educate the the ordinary Canadians who are not prejudiced that but they are being prepared to be to become prejudiced. What there is the an petition? effort. What does the petition say? I mean, what is the petition about? Yeah, I would like you to post it as uh, you've got it. The wording is very simple. It says whereas Hindus uh, are you know two point five percent of the, of our population, that we are hardworking, uh, we contribute greatly to the economy, to the culture, and to the progress of this country. Uh, but at the same time, there are negative pre uh, stereotypes, prejudice being promoted in the media, in the academia, um, and, and that uh, there are attacks on temples, there are attacks on Hindus, and therefore, what we're asking the government of Canada is to recognize this term Hindu phobia or anti-Hindu sentiment mm -hmm. and to take steps to educate uh, Canadians uh, about Hindu phobia and about Hindu dharma so we can address this prejudice, this negative stereotyping and discrimination and acts of terror and harm 
the um, and hate that is being directed towards the Hindu community, which is a very, very excellent community that is growing in Canada. And, uh, you know, we want more Hindus to come to Canada and feel safe. But right now, uh, if you are at work uh, and you have a DEI committee, they might be holding a, a, a talk on caste and you might be sitting at work and, uh, and thinking, oh, my God, they're talking about Hindus being oppressors. And there is absolutely the most important thing is there's absolutely not a single case in, uh, in Canada where uh, Hindus have uh, been found to be oppressors in this uh, in this way that is being described, right? So there is uh, there is common crime, but there has never been a case of caste oppression. That the case that was in BC, there is a case in BC. A human rights uh, tribunal ruled there were two Sikh gentlemen who were beating up on a Hindu Dalit, and they called him uh, Chamar. And the BC Human Rights Commission ruled it as, um, you know, as um, as a hate crime under ancestry and place of origin, and they awarded uh, him some damages, some ten thousand dollars. So there are some people who are using that to imply that Hindus are oppressors, but these were two Sikh men who who actually oppressed a Hindu Dalit. So actually, this is a case of Hindu phobia. But you know, people who are actually behind this uh, this uh, case, they're misrepresenting it as uh, Hindu phobia, as uh, caste as being a Hindu issue, when actually uh, it, the Hindu was a victim. So you can see how twisted and how vulnerable the system is in believing when misinformation is fed to them, and they are told that the Hindu scriptures, uh, you know, allow or promote. Uh, caste system, which is absolutely false. And, you know, we have the swastik issue. We want to be able to use the swastik. This is a, a beautiful, sacred sign of auspiciousness. And, uh, you know, the uh, Jagmeet's government had passed, uh, um, had presented a motion to declare this as a hate, hate symbol. And we had meetings, we had uh, huge deputations, uh, which Kohi led. We had a petition um, uh, to uh, to educate the the Canadian Parliament that the swastika is a holy uh, symbol, and that if they do um, pass uh, uh, anti hate um, motion on that symbol, then that should be the uh, about the Hakenkraus, which is the Christian sim, uh, you know, which Hitler used. Uh, Hitler had no knowledge of swastika. You can just imagine. Why would uh, uh, a Nazi, a Christian person, uh, use a Hindu symbol to mobilize mobilize people to hate the Jews? I mean, because the Christian people have no idea what a, what a Hindu Hindu symbol is. So obviously, he was using a well known Christian symbol to mobilize his people. So there's a lot of mis misinformation, miseducation, and misrepresentation uh, of our dharma. And it's on each one of us. You know, Hindus are so happy working hard, getting the good education and bringing the food on the table, buying the expensive cars and homes and doing well. But, you know, we are failing in our duty to protect dharma and protect our tradition because our children are not going to be comfortable uh, um, being Hindu. They'll, they'll, they'll want to hide their Hindu heritage if this continues. And you have to ask yourself, do you want that for your children? Do you want your children to not feel safe with their Hindu identity when they go to school or to work? You know, and, well, and, and you, yes, go ahead, Bala. Do you think uh, how, how, how much support will this uh, petition get in the House of Commons? As much support as people like you step forward and help promote it because it's part of education because most people are going around the day-to-day -day life not realizing the importance. It's people like you, and I'm so grateful that you're doing this interview. We need to educate our community because they're in this, you know, they're sleeping. We need to wake them up that this is a huge movement that is against Hindus. And if we don't wake up and speak up, our children are gonna face the brunt of it and you will face it at work through the DEI, the, the you know the, the training, the training that comes uh, for anti-hate, 
you will be described as an oppressor and and someone who who's spreading hate and and they will be prejudiced and and you will uh, uh feel the the heat at your work when you're looked down upon and when your uh, fingers are pointed at you that you come from a culture that that is evil so we need to stand up ours is a most beautiful you know i'm not here to say we are better than anyone i'm not here to say we're inferior but we are who we are and we have an ancient tradition we don't need to explain to anybody but we live in a country that by by its constitution allows all religions to practice freely so when our temples are attacked you know uh, i've spoken about this to the police and i've said you know a temple is a different from a masjid or a church or a synagogue because a temple is where uh, the deity is living there is a living um a deity there our devta resides in a temple so when you break into a temple when you climb all over uh the the you know where the murtis are you pull the pull the earrings or necklace and you damage and you walk around that you have violated our sacred space so that is a hate crime you know it's not a robbery they call it a robbery but that is uh, you know it's traumatic for a hindu to know that their temple has been broken in and and people have been walking around with shoes all over our mandir you know uh, altar and 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 uh, you know uh, basically it has to be re-sanctified and it it's it's you know children we've had calls from parents that the children are afraid to go to the temple because it's been broken into you know so uh, this is deeply deeply hurtful for us and we have to educate you know i'm on many different committees um peel police and we're doing anti hate education and uh, uh, you know and each each of the hindus uh, in their own sphere at work at school should take the initiative to educate their friends family coworkers about hindu dharm speak up tell them raksha bandhan like jagmeet singh like uh, has posted he doesn't celebrate hindu uh you know raksha bandhan because you know it's about women's oppression women need protection you know we need to educate people that this is a beautiful um, celebration of the love between a brother and sister in fact i tried uh, tied this uh, rakhi and i know across canada um you know parents take their children to tie rakhi on police officers to thank them for protecting us and i've done it this year too um you know we have a beautiful tradition that the whole world can benefit from from yoga from meditation but um there are people they are breaking in their forces they 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 people who hate hindu dharma they threatened by it they have their own reasons we don't we don't need to you know we can't change them but what we can do is our part to speak up so i want to come back to the petition um we have worked for a year we approached many many mps they had their own reasons to say no we're very grateful um that um, we now have um mp that has sponsored this but this is a bipartisan issue this is not about one uh, the 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 party of the uh, melissa landsman we are very grateful to her she has spoken very courageously against uh, hindu phobia and we're very grateful to melissa however this is not uh, about uh, a party this is an all party approach we must approach our own politicians because uh, we need all parties to protect us yeah. um, against hindu phobia and to speak up and recognize this is just the first step yeah and we are also approached to michael ford uh, to uh, to include hindu phobia in the anti racism secretariat we're still working on it mm -hmm. and again there's political forces who are fighting against that but you know we we don't give up as hindus you know we have survived for in india 12 14000 years of um, the yeah, attack on our dharma and across the world we face it in australia and uh, uk everywhere you know so we are spreading peace and love through yoga and meditation uh, but we need to speak up about hindu phobia and yeah. to protect our values our culture our tradition and spread goodwill because that's what our dharma does 
Thank you, Dr. Sharma. I think that is a very uh, interesting talk on uh, on India uh, and uh, the Hindu <laughs> uh, culture and traditions. I mean, I think yeah. we should meet again and see how the how the uh, petition. Uh, yeah, we reached uh, seven thousand. We've crossed seven thousand. We'd like to make it seventy thousand. Okay. Um, you know, uh, we want the government of Canada to hear that many Hindus are concerned for their children going to school, for them going to work and facing Hinduphobia, and in the community facing random attacks. We need to, the government to hear. So thank you for your support. And I hope you will, uh, we will work together and put the, the, the images that need to go up. Uh, it's a two-step process. The most important thing that I want to convey is that signing the petition is a two-stage process. The first is when you click the button to sign it, and the most important step is that when you get an email from the, the House of Commons, you get an email to confirm, asking to confirm that yes, you did use this email to sign it, you must click on that verification. That, and if you don't do it, then your vote will not be, uh, get through because it's a two-step verification that they have. So that you know, anybody can form any email, and then you know what you can have ten thousand signatures using. You can go on and on and on. So they have to verify that this email actually does belong to someone. So they will send you that email and say, "Did you sign this petition?" And then you click on this. Yes, uh, there is a little button there. So we have a, a flyer on explaining that, which if you can post at the end, and uh, we're very grateful. Together, let's unite to spread peace and love and also to stand up against those who, who wish to harm the Hindus, the peaceful Hindus that live in Canada. Thank you. Jai Sri Ram. Thank Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you.